and so I, I of, get what he's yeah. coming, but obviously my mindset <clears throat> is like, dog, though, I don't believe in marriage. Yeah. Cool. But as of right now, I'm okay. I even have my life structured to like, <laughs> I'm just going to get a surrogate, get that, because I want my kids. <laughs> How much would you pay for Rambo? Um, five hundred dollars. Okay. Nah, okay. <laughs> On God, five hundred. That's me. Subscribe, man. like, comment, share. We just hit six hundred subscribers, so we That's appreciate crazy, all of our bro. Yes. followers. One K on the way. Yeah. We're going up. One K on the way. Nah. <laughs>
I actually have social anxiety. <laughs> like social anxiety. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> like, big. I'm Sometimes people it. invite me to like things and obviously I need to kind of show support as Rayway and the Ray persona like just trying to stay home or not. Bro, I have to like get myself shots to get into like the album and stuff, which is Rayway. Yeah. But yeah man. Sometimes I even go to the club and the Rayway hasn't yet come out and I'm just like you know, a lot of people want to say hi. A lot of people, you know, they're showing love, but sometimes I kind of just. Mm. What's the What's the worst part about? What's the what? The, whole, the worst part about the whole railway. Is there a worst part? Good, bad, the ugly. About railway. Yeah. As um, in, like, what, like, both on it is mainly like how other people perceive railway. So, for one, one example would be the fact that because you're outgoing friendly, people mm-hmm. assume they can skip the line. Hundred <laughs> percent. That's one now. Hundred percent. That's man. what I'm saying. Hundred percent. Speak but, to that. Speak but sometimes, you know, with that skipping the line thing, like in reality, you know, from a business standpoint, which is railway, you know, um, I don't want to kind of help people. Like, okay. It's cut through the line you know or like getting for free but as ray who's ever at least so nice and whatnot you know oh my friend my friend my friend my friend you yeah, know what i'm yeah, saying yeah that's just the whole downside of it like my events sometimes i don't even make fuck all because ray kind of like oh shit my friend my friend my friend yeah come in come in come in come in but yeah. you know how's it been like starting was it was it hard starting yeah what do you mean Starting the whole rate, because remember, you went from just doing your job to now, I'm going to start running my own events. Uh, how was it starting, man? <coughs> it was, um, like, obviously, the railway kind of started from disrespect. Um, but yet again, I was kind of, like, dumbfounded with the amount of love that people actually showed me on my first event. I think we had, like, over 650 people pull out for that March Madness. I don't even remember. Was this in Finzi? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, man. Crazy times, bro. I know. <laughs> I know. Nigga, <laughs> Finzi was shaking that summer. I can't remember why. <laughs> if any had niggas in the chokehold, bro. I don't know why, That's crazy. That was a spot. Yeah, Finzi was, uh, was a good that was time. A, that was a spot. <laughs> you saw my post yesterday? You post yesterday? Yeah, I was like, right. Infinity had niggas in the chokehold. Oh yeah yeah, 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 bro. We yeah, like so if anything, right. we'll still have niggas in Choco this summer, man. You Amen. guys don't know what's happening, bro. Hey man, let's get to you it. You guys don't know what's happening, bro. But yeah, I, I wanted to kind of touch upon this like social anxiety thing because just in a general sense, because not even you specifically, but I, there's so many times like I'll have like I have conversations with people, and there's so many people that probably over the last few months I've heard say they have social anxiety. So my question is kind of like, where do you think it stems from? Because I feel like so many people have it, but they just kind of like push it down because like you have to kind of go on you have to go out into the public uh, if you're out, your friends want to go out and you want you want to go with them you have to you know you have to like take that step so what do you think like the social anxiety comes from like on like a deeper level do you think it's like something like that's to do with your upbringing or like what do you think it stems from like in a general sense because like, there's a lot of people that say they have it i honestly believe it's from my upbringing and also from what would i call it now I'll just kind of classify it as like my upbringing. I really haven't really like analyzed myself and as to why mm-hmm. I have social anxiety. Mm-hmm. But if I was to, I would probably like tie it down to like my upbringing. I don't know why, but it's just who I am. Yeah. My heart is just like so heavy every time I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready like to socialize. Like, yeah. you know, sometimes guys, like before, this was when I used to live in a house that had code to get in. Like, guys would invite me out, and I'm like, nah, bro, they would literally come to my house, press the code, come grab me out of bed, be like, yo, let's go, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And also, even before Rayway, I only used to technically go out if it's not, like, a birthday or I'm working, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah, I'm on. What made you decide to work security then? Well, made me, bro, I was just... I, know, that, I, was, I also like security I was, at one point, bro. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Where at? This is 4 for one 
<laughs> is that place Peaceful. Bro, I probably went there like once. Or is that twice. place open? <laughs> nah. It's not open. No, it it's closed down. COVID yeah. finished oh. that place, bro. There was, a, there was a funny thing, I think, with COVID, when they were closing. They had like this post. I don't know if they had a problem with like, I don't know, the people they were renting from, but they had this post of like this meme of this big buff guy, but like his thing was out, bro. That was funny. <laughs> I was like, what a way to say goodbye. <laughs> Sure. Like, now, man, what made me start working security, bro? I think I was just kind of looking for extra bread. Yeah, it, it wasn't that deep, bro. It was, it was, it was nice, like, I swear, bro. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, the, the Loki, Loki, also, I know that social anxiety, I do have it, and I really want to kind of like break out of that cycle and put myself out there. Mm -hmm. And the only like valuable reason I knew I could actually go out was oh, shit, I have to work. Yeah. You know, so I went out, I socialized when I could, you know, but man, I'm the guy who works security, but like, I'd rather be at the smoking patio, you know, or at the back, you know, just to kind of like minimize. How many people you interact with? Exactly, like, bro. Yeah. So Dustin, what do you think, what do you think it stems from? Like mm. the social anxiety thing, because so many people, so many people I've heard, I have social anxiety. There's, there's a lot of reasons, like even like, <coughs> uh, with, um. Like Africans, especially Nigerians, there's elements of, let's say, when you're out, you're always on the edge because you don't want to do anything wrong. Back to what I said, the beating before your parents, you get what I'm saying? All these things, they, they add up. Mm -hmm. They add up, and then at one point, you're now an adult. Because bear in mind, a lot of people, when they come here, there's that element of, oh, I'm free now. Mm. Right? So with, with some people, it's like, okay, I'm free. But I'm not used to this freedom. With other people, it's like I'm free. I'm doing everything. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's for some for some people that the people that are like I'm free. Like, what is this freedom? It can turn into like I don't know what the outside has for me, because the unknown either makes you feel scared or it makes you feel adventurous, right? So it's, it's now down to what exactly that lack of freedom made you feel were you in a house feeling like i want to get out of this or were you just cool with just being told you can't go out you're just chilling at home that kind of stuff mm. so that's that's one element to it another element could just be you just you for some people you can feel a lot of energies like even myself when i'm out the only people that like you hear with a lot of people that don't know me they say i have a rest, I, I have a resting bitch face i'm not approachable um I look mean, but then with all with the people that know me, they're like, "Oh, he's the happiest person." You know, that used to be my own like stigma too, bro. Like yeah. a lot of people used to think I had a resting bitch face. Exactly. Yep. I guess it's all of us. I just don't like being around too many people. <laughs> <laughs> too I many energies, all of this, man. But yeah, man, it's in it's just interesting because it's like now that I think about it, like I definitely get anxious too. It's just and like I think you can definitely stem it back to like just like bringing and like getting in trouble and it's like oh, i'll get a text when someone's like if somebody texts me they're like we need to talk oh my oh, god oh my god please i actually just got that for the <laughs> yo you got like this is a like psa please stop sending those text messages and not explaining afterwards because the thing is people play into that people love doing it how and do I'm you, guilty how do you reply? that's what i'm oh, saying or no i'm saying no, 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 and, and you call them right away and they don't pick up and they don't like, ah, yeah, that's like, why like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you start how, 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 you, and you're like, how do you react I'm not saying like how would you I'm saying how, do you, how did how, you how did I react I when I get those yeah. messages um, I'm just still but like I know like within myself I'm, I'm tweaking <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm tweaking off. I'm off, oh, yo. I'm, I'm like, yo. I don't know bro, what. Because the thing is, like, I used to ask myself. Is it, I was like, is it anxiety or is it like, is it like a guilty conscience? But I'm like, I didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not mean. a guilty conscience. So maybe yeah. it's anxiety. Like I'm anxious of what they're gonna say. Because yeah. I'm like, I'm thinking it's something. I'm already like, I feel like my brain's thinking it's something negative oh. immediately. You know what yeah. I mean? I so I feel like you can kind of tie that back into like your upbringing and like getting into trouble and stuff. But it's just very interesting because. So many people actually have social anxiety. Oh, yeah. See, when I get those texts now, ever since what, three, ever since <laughs> got in my life, I stopped a lot of bullshit from happening, bro. As in, in terms like, of, like message, like um, message, like for example, the, remember, remember when it's when we when we started getting to know each other. There's the texting. Wait, is this I, same yes, the problem childs. Problem child. Yeah, that's my boy, man. This, thing is, like, this is all news to me. This is everyone's boy, <laughs> bro. Going on. bro. I know, I know there is something going between you two, but like, I didn't know you two. 
Bro, he has a problem with everyone. The that's only reason raw. you, the only, re- the only reason why you're cool with him is you're because you're not tight with him. He has, yeah, him like that's that. crazy. You haven't seen, you haven't seen you haven't his, nah, his dirty you know laundry. Nigga, nigga shows me love, shows me respect, man. I respect it. Hundred. Why? In fact, why? 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 Why do you think? Bro, you guys, you trying think to about it. Well, no, 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 but no, no, this, this is some bro, psychological, bro. Because the thing is, like, he shows you love because there's something you have that he can't get. Like, why? That's what you think. You, like there's something you have that he can't get he only how many other people does he treat like shit think about it Bro, i didn't know like i just thought it was you too because apparently how often do you spend enough time like, with him but how often do i spend enough time with anybody this is this is my point <laughs> like, i only have like maybe four friends shout out right yeah, this, this is why we're, we're not we're not shocked why you would Dude, not see you would not understand what we mean but yeah mm-hmm. problem child it's it just it's just like the idea it's kind of like you're saying there's Ray Wayne and then there's Ray, right? Uh, it's the exact same thing. We understand, like, why, you know, like, oh, like, that's your boy. You can say that. On surface level, yeah, like, he shows you love. That's fine. Like, uh-huh. anybody that shows you love, you're not going to think anything past that. Uh-huh. But, like, when, if somebody were to say, oh, if somebody only met you as Ray Wayne, uh-huh. and they, nah. like, kind of had this, like, pers- like idea of who you were, but then they the actually surface, met you, and yeah. like, oh, this is what Ray's actually like, uh-huh. that's kind of what we're trying to get at. You know what I mean? What are you actually like behind closed doors, essentially? That's what that's where he, what Jeez, he's saying man. comes from. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Back to what I was saying, Sha. <laughs> Sorry, man. If um, I'm triggering you. No, no, no. What? Okay. What was that's I saying fine, again? Bro. It's not that deep. Why did, I, why did I even bring him up? I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Bruh. I, no. I think we we're talking about... Um, I'll bring him. Oh, we were talking about social anxiety. Social anxiety. Yeah. yeah well, link it. And you were talking about behaviors. You were talking about behaviors. And you, you said you cut behaviors off after you became friends with That's it. Yeah. So, with him, I realized... There's, there's like you can't take bullshit in this life anything you don't want in your life you take it out unless it's life-threatening the only thing that can change my mind right now is death i'm not even joking even when we started to get to know each other how many times did i say bro you're texting is shit when i call you you answer unless you're busy when i text you you answer is the same even even um a tarte as well sometimes when you text me yeah i don't reply <laughs> simple things like that there, there's like certain why? girls that have texted me um hey. we need to talk i don't reply <laughs> peace bro peace <laughs> don't you like wonder, no okay, i stopped what? i stopped because i stopped because i thought about it i said the only thing that can change my mind is death there's not unless unless you Unless what you have to say is going to kill me mm-hmm. or affect my life mm-hmm. to the point where I, I fear death, I don't want to hear it because you clearly you didn't you clearly didn't see it as important to say to it communicate when it you properly, me- message yeah. me. Yeah, I get what you're saying. So, you see. When, however serious it is, I've stopped. I've stopped caring because I'm just like mm-hmm. I've gone in so much trouble that I'm like, again, is that whole guilty conscience or just anxiety? Yeah. I have man. done nothing wrong to you. Yeah. So, you are causing me anxiety. I don't want to talk then. Yeah. If you're texting me, we need to talk, and you don't tell me what about, you clearly don't want to talk. I don't reply. Simple. I just don't get how that shit doesn't like, you know, obviously... You no, get it that, used you get to. I'm not saying it doesn't. Like, it, it okay. didn't. It used to until I realized it wasn't a guilty conscience. Mm. It, was it was anxiety. anxiety yeah. Now that I know it's anxiety... Why are you causing me? Like, why? Like, why am I giving you? How, but how do you shut off the anxiety, though? Good question. You, you, you talk like, to yourself. Technically, what I how I shut it is like finding out. Okay, mm. well, go on. But if you just see it and it's giving you anxiety, and you did decide so who, to like, who, close who's it, that how, person to you? You still get that anxiety, yeah. bro. Like, oh, bro. Like you're doing about your daily thing. Oh shit, what's this guy trying to say? Like, why would you text me? Have you? Have you? Um, have you made it a thing to say? Don't text me that. Or say what you want to say. Have you made it a thing to do that? Bro, you get it from like random people too, man. Okay. Now, if I text you, we need to talk compared to a random person texting you, we need to talk. Which one feels more important? You. You. So now, if it's me, are you close enough to me to tell me what you don't like about the things I do to you? Yes. Yes, right? So in that (coughs) situation, you tell me, Guy, if if you're gonna text me, text me, Communicate with me and then it's up to me to correct my behavior. Yeah. If it's a random person, that's when I ignore. Because for me, why why I say I ignore is because I make <clears throat> I make it apparent what I don't like about the people around me. You could ask him. We've had 
many, many arguments, many, many tiffs about him not replying or taking time to reply. He probably and, hate me too, man. But, <laughs> no, but the thing is, like, it's again, it's, it's down to respect. And respect, it's not something that is massive. In this case, it's not a big issue. It's not when I when I say respect, I mean it in the minimal in the minimal term. In terms of like, there's a certain respect that you have that if you see a te- if I'm texting you, I'm not texting you For no to reason. just talk. Yeah, yeah. So the respect you have is that when I text you, most of the time you reply when you reply in a good time. You get what I'm saying? If you bro, take three days to reply, you would have heard me tell you bro. in person, bro. You're bugging. Like, we would have had that conversation, trust me. It's yeah. easy to say, man. Because with me, man, honestly, I know that's a big fault of mine. Like, I don't know if I just, like, mentally just reply you. I see the text, but I end up not replying. Yeah, but like, I'm telling you, you don't, you don't, like, you've done it once, but that wasn't an accident. Because I remember you, you told me, oh, so, uh, sorry, bro. I thought about it in my head. I just didn't reply. I have those moments too. Yeah, that's happening. Before. But it's not prolonged. Cause, bro, every time I text you, you reply in time. I call you. Exactly. Because I'm not a texter, by the way. Like, I exactly. Just, I found the hack. It's the call. Yeah. It, but but do, you, do you get my point? Yeah. Like, because, like to divulge, because for me, if you're going to text me, we need to talk. There are two reasons why you're texting me. There's either you don't know me or you've disrespected the fact that I've told you I don't like that. And in both situations, why would you cause me anxiety? Hence mm. why it's not that important. That's why, like, like when you asked me, how did I get to that point? This is how I got to that point. Mm. I asked myself questions. I asked, who is this person to me? Are they close enough to do this? If they're close enough, they should know not to text me this. If they are texting me this, they don't deserve a reply because clearly it's not that important. They can see me and talk to me. Mm. So that's how I got here. Yeah. In terms of like anxiety in general, I ask myself questions. I ask myself, like, I talk my way out of a lot of downsides. Like, I'll have, I'll be in a depressive state. I'll talk my way out of it. I'll be in a self-doubt state. I, I ask myself out of it. Anxiety state, I ask questions. Because that's the main thing. Mm. A lot of the reasons why a lot of people stay in depression or a lot of the reasons why people stay in these, in these solemn states is because you, you're in there. Yeah, rather than finding your way out, because yeah. like I'll put it in a physical example. Imagine if we're standing outside, I open the door and I drag you in. Right, mm-hmm. this room is anxiety. I drag you into the room. Do you think you can fight and struggle your way back out the room? If it was me, if you were the one, obviously. yeah. And this is this is like you don't want to be in this room. Do you think? Mm you would fight me to, like, leave the room. Yeah. You would. Mm. So that's how I think about it. As soon as I'm put in that room, I'm fighting my way mm. out. I'm asking myself questions. Why am I here? Yeah. Who's causing this? Is it like me? This? I'm asking myself. By the time I've asked myself enough questions, yeah. I've fought my way back out yeah. into the corridor. Yeah. That's, that's how I see all these situations. Yeah. It works for me. It might work. Yeah. It might not. So it's it's just one <laughs> it's, of those things. It's easier, bro. It's yeah, easier, 100%. Bro. 100%. I mean, like he said, it, it took him... Oh, bro, no, dude, yeah, this, this didn't come like, overnight. You know what I mean? <laughs> this yeah. didn't come overnight. Yeah, it took him a while to get there. But I really appreciate man. this conversation because I feel like, especially as guys, it's like opening up and talking about like mental health issues and like just dealing with certain things like anxiety and like depression and stuff. It's you know, it's you know, there's a stigma around men and their emotions. So I really appreciate this conversation and just sharing with people because I feel like this is something that you know us as males like we need to talk about too because we deal with these things too. It's not only like you know what I'm saying not only women, but the message that I would have to share is just like, I feel like a lot of adults don't really, I feel like adulthood is very interesting because it's like, you're a teenager, then you're like in your early 20s, and then all of a sudden life just like smacks you in the face. And it's like, oh, you got to deal with all this shit, and you don't kind of have time to deal with all this other stuff that you like, were kind of dealing with too, like, when we're talking about anxiety and how you were raised and like, you're dealing with all these other things. Like, you have all these, like, trauma responses to things that you've dealt with or you've experienced growing up. Um, but the message I would like to share is to just, like, try to soul search, like, as like as adults. Like, just try to, like, actually take... Because I feel like life becomes so fast where it's, like, you have bills to pay. You have a car payment. Um, you have this job, this job. Like, you have a girlfriend. Like, you don't... People don't spend time and just isolate with them. People don't spend time with themselves anymore. Mm. 
right? And that's where you can get to that level of thinking to where you're able to actually like, you're actually able to be like, okay, like I'm dealing with this. How do I get myself out of it? You're asking yourself questions, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. A lot of people don't take that time to just isolate and spend time with themselves and try and figure out why they feel some way or why they're dealing with certain things. So if you're not so soul searching, please take that time to do so. If not, therapy. <laughs> look, look, there's a stigma around therapy. I feel like especially black people, like, ah, nah, it's fine. Like, it's whatever. But, like, look, if you're not going soul search, man, therapy's also an option. Have you been to therapy? Before? I personally haven't been to therapy. Mm. Right? But before but, therapy, it's, you <clears throat> have to be honest with yourself. A lot of people or you even, saying, yeah, you won't even reach out to get a therapist. Yeah, because a lot, a lot of the reason why people don't get therapists is because they're not even honest with themselves. Yeah. Oh, you're depressed. No, I'm not. You are. You, you're always sad, bro. Mm. Like, go to therapy. Mm. I don't need a therapist. Mm. Why? Because I'm not depressed. Oh. Whereas, like, for me, because I'm honest with, with myself, I also know I'm capable of not, like, getting myself out of that situation. Hence why I don't want to search for a therapist. Whereas for someone else, it's the thing of once you're honest with yourself, then you think, am I capable of getting over this or do I need to go to a therapist? That's where you now see a lot of people opening up to the idea of a therapist. Mm. It's the same with if you're injured and someone tells you, bro, you're bleeding and you say, no, I'm not. No one can convince you to go to the doctor if you don't see that you're bleeding. Mm. Whereas if you see that you're bleeding and you know, Okay, cool. I've got some bandages. I do know a few bits of first aid. I can patch myself up. Or you go to the hospital. That's how I see therapy. But you have to be honest with yourself to know, am I actually able to yeah. bandage myself up? Yeah, there's a pride. It's not just a matter of pride. It's, yeah. am I able to have the ability to do it? Yeah. If you don't, go to the doctor. Yeah. Or learn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can still learn how to be a therapist to yourself. Mm-hmm. You can also have your faith to rely on. Yeah. Because the faith is a big thing. You get what I'm saying? It's funny. So. I remember. It's funny you kind of said faith. Because I remember when I first got into like my real first depression. Um, I was kind of clueless. Obviously, I've kind of had like white friends and all that. So that's like, I don't even know. Back home, I didn't even know the word depression. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did not know you, the you, word depression until I came the, to Canada. You and the rest yeah. of us, man. You, you know, and obviously, chill, like, you know, my white people, the mm. brothers and whatnot, you know, yeah. like, I kind of, like, found out about more about mental illness and yeah. whatnot. And when I got into my first depression, speaking to, obviously, my rocks, which are my parents, bruh, when you mentioned fate... <laughs> <laughs> that just triggered me because they were like, bro, it's the devil that is working on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's man. the devil. God That's what they're going to say. Man. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. And that man. shit's not real. It's the devil. Yeah. Get up. Go yeah. to church. Yeah. Nah, man. God bless all of them, man. I swear. No, but you know, the funny thing is you, meant, you mentioned that and I think, again, that goes back to the lack of um, clarity when parents say these things, especially Nigerian parents. Oh. Like, when you say things like, oh, it's the devil that's doing it, like the, the child can only go based on what you've told them. And if you're going to tell me the devil, I've never seen the devil in person Physical. or understand who the devil is. So now you're just speaking in a bunch of rubbish. Now you're not helping. Whereas like, if you explain the elements of spirituality, you explain the relationship, you explain what faith really is. When you're saying, oh, Mom, I'm depressed, and she says, "Also, oh, devil working on you." But you just need to get close to God. You need to, you need to ground yourself. All these things that they say is the same elements of the real life secular world where you're going to therapy. The idea of going to therapy is that you're relieving your burdens onto someone else. Mm-hmm. That someone else, most of what they're doing is listening. Mm-hmm. What does God do most of the time? Listen to you. Yeah, he does. Do you get what I'm saying? Bro. And also he can talk to you, but it's only through, if you're reading yeah. the words, yeah. it literally says, this is God's word. Yeah. This is God. This is God's voice. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the way you hear God. So when you're going through stuff and let's say you want to rely on faith, I know with a lot of, a lot of Nigerians, especially it's, it's hard based on, especially if you start to depart, it's hard to understand what that relationship means when all your, all your parents have been doing is 
you go, uh, try not to go to hellfire go to church <laughs> they've been pushed do you get what I'm saying <laughs> that's the only message they're pushing mm. rather than teaching you how to get to heaven mm. rather than fear mongering teach me how to love teach me how to understand God teach me how to get closer to him teach mm. me how like I can relieve this burden like it's one thing to have the burden strapped onto you if you don't know how to untie that rope to take it off if no one's teaching you and they're telling you what well, that bird is going to take you to hell i don't want to go help me Te- like show me how to get this shit off but a lot of what our parents and you can't blame them because they also had a lack of knowledge too yeah yeah that's another thing yeah they don't know how to <clears throat> explain their experience or articulate their experience of god to you as a child right and because of that that's where that that mishap and that, um, like that's where a lot of things are missing yeah. when we now come here, especially in this Western world, and we're exposed to so much. And then you look back at what your parents have been forcing you to do, and you're like, mm, I don't want that. Mm. You know, when they're forcing you to go to church, and when you're in the presence, you don't feel like being there, yeah. rather than understanding that the reason for you being there is just is just to be in the presence. When you grow up being forced to go to church you're forced to do these things you you grow up with a resistance because you don't want you don't want to be forced it's not that you don't want to be in the presence of god you don't want to be forced that's where that misinformation is for the, for the most part I but no no I, i'm just yeah, saying this is a general yeah, I know, I know. this is a general yeah, statement but yeah yeah I, I get i get where you're coming from like that whole is the devil yeah right I, was, been there. I, I remember just like thinking like bro what kind of, what kind of stupid ass ass <laughs> <laughs> like, bro like bro, Yo, trust- like oh shit my son I'm sorry like you know like, <laughs> no. I feel sorry for you like you know like they're like I beg you like what are you saying the devil has come inside you like mm. that is the devil like go pick up your bible go read mm. you know <sighs> oh, <bro. Yes. laughs> it's calm though it's calm obviously I did kind of go to church during that period, um, and I actually became close with a priest. I'm a Catholic, by the way, so if I say priest, I'm a pastor. But yeah, became close with a priest, and he kind of felt like my therapist. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember him just bringing me to the office, and we we're just like speaking, and he was actually crying too, which is crazy. Oh, crazy. Is your trauma crazy, that crazy, big? Crazy. <laughs> Bro, listen, man. Um, yeah, your boy's been through things, bro. bro. I've been through things, bro. Life is hard, man. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Been uh, through things, my boy. Bro, fuck you. It's just, bro, some shit just happens you never expect. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's just like, bro. And to the public, you have to kind of like put out a strong persona, bro. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Shout out to all those people with mental illnesses, man. Or going through shit, bro. Like, but try and voice it out, man. Try and voice it out. Dude, I get what you, like. I've grown numb to some things because if you remember when I told you the story about what happened to me and my family, the Tom and Jerry story. Tom and Jerry story. Yeah. I don't want to repeat it because I don't know how. Like, I don't know if I can actually say that story. I think I removed it on the other pod, but um, I, I can explain it after. But essentially. Your reaction made me realize that's not normal. No, it's not. Because I've been so numb to it for the past how many years. <laughs> and Jerry's story. I'll tell you after. I'll, t- I'll tell you after, but yeah. Wow, shit, man. That, that, that <laughs> is yeah, actually man. a fucking title, bro. Tell me yeah. Jerry's story. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, well, I don't want to go deep into it, but yeah, man. No, she but I, I get what you mean. Like, right, we've all been through stuff. <sighs> different amount of stuff bro oh, <laughs> you know bro, life, yeah, life is hard bro <laughs> I mean at the same time it's what makes you you gonna say Bill's character <laughs> no, gonna no, say, no. but it, it kinda does though you. I can't yeah, lie it bro it actually you, bro. does man because to some extent you're putting on a persona to another extent you're hard willed do you get oh. what I'm saying you can see a lot of different things in a different light you're able to move past a lot more and have a, a stronger mental fortitude mm-hmm. 
you. But again, that can also be to your detriment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Talk, sir. You're a smart boy, man. This is good. <laughs> like, just hear you and, like, your, your, your views on di- different things, bro. I'm learning, bro. <laughs> Dude, bro. You're like, bro. You're made for this. <laughs> wow, that's how many times you heard that, bro. Shut up, bro. Speaking into your life. That's crazy. Bro. I've heard that a few yeah, times, bro. but it's not the first or second. You too, man. You yeah, too, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's crazy for me, too, because it's just like, I feel like I've never seen, like, past Rayway, but, like, right now, just having this conversation, it's oh. like I'm kind of, like, seeing another side to you, and I'm really appreciating, like, this kind of, like, like softer side of you, mm-hmm. not in, not in a, and not in a negative way at all, but just like you know, this kind of more vulnerable side to you, really like having like grown ass conversations. You feel me? It's cool. This is why I like this. I really like. I love this podcast space because it's like you get to really like. I feel closer to you now. I'm not even joking. Often yeah, it, and like bro. I feel like I've like we've gotten tighter just off of the conversations we're having. You know what I mean? But these are the conversations that should be had amongst people, yeah. anyways. I was, oh, yeah, you know. Sure. So when people say, "Oh, podcast this, podcast that." I understand there are some that are just theatrics, yeah. but there's a lot of podcasts that's allowing people to to talk and just now I could call be myself, mm-hmm. and also for other people to understand who I am. Especially someone that's that's seen a lot, you need people to understand who you are. Yeah, you know, because even even for example, something as small as like the whole line thing, it could be as small as someone watching this and seeing how stressed you actually are when you're like. I, I'm losing money by letting you through. If someone actually cares, they'll be like, you know, I'll, next time I get to, I'll just wait way outside. You know what man. could actually help? Come in early. <laughs> like I swear to God, just come early. <laughs> like bro, <laughs> like honestly, I want us to actually talk about it. Like, what is the stigma with people not coming early? Mm, to that's clubs? a good question because I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you come early to the club? Why don't I come yeah. early to the club? Okay, I have, li- I personally, I don't think I have a problem with time. In, t- in like my circle, I'm big on like coordinating and like figuring out what's happening. Most times when you reach out to me, like, yo, like, are you and your boys coming, you're talking uh-huh. to me, right? There's uh-huh. a reason for that. Uh-huh. I'm usually the one coordinating, but at the same time, because I'm responsible for others sometimes when it comes to that space, I'm limited in my access and my like transportation to getting there. If it was just me, if I was coming uh-huh. by myself, I would come earlier. I'm always, okay. I'm always telling things like, bro, I'm not trying to come late. Even when I'm not even if I'm going there, if I'm going somewhere, I'm not trying to push it late. I'm not trying to wait. I don't want to wait in line. Yeah, who wants to wait in line? <laughs> Look, if if it's me and this this guy, he doesn't play with time too. If it's me, him, bro, he's yeah, like, yo, bro. I'll be at your house at ten. I'm like, I, I'm ready by ten. We're we're gone. You get what I'm saying? I'm he's at my house at ten thirty. We're gone. But like I said, when you're you know obviously you're around certain people, um, and you're like with a large group of guys. Sometimes well, what about just, people that are like solo though? Because like you can't be everybody that's moving in crews. Oh, hundred percent. I can't. That's what I'm saying. I can't explain it. If I was Bro. talking about myself personally, I would be at places a lot earlier. But if I'm moving in, in a group, well, and my niggas are banking on me to get inside or like you know that kind of communicate uh, with you. You know how it is. I can't just leave them. You feel me? Like I'm coming with my guys, kind of thing. That's but that is a good question about this whole stigma about coming late. Like, I don't get it. Because, bro, there I, are I, I try to, I try to think about, There are a lot of reasons, like, bro. I try to think about, about, like, um, when I used to party. Like, you know, when I'm not working at the club, like, I remember my guys, like, oh, shit, let's check out OV. OV was the spot. You know, it yeah. is not Citizen, like, OV. Bro, I remember 1030. I'm there. Mm. But, like, right now, man, like... Bro, club doesn't start in Winnipeg. Black clubs don't start till one o'clock. Like, why? We've talked about <laughs> like, that. Why, bro? bro? And remember, then remember. they'll be popping bottles. Guys that pop bottles, they pop bottles in at two thirty, two o'clock. We're like, okay, club is done. They're all complaining. That's or guys, insane. or guys, like guess what? Two thirty. They're bro. asking me, yo, where's the after party, nigga? If you came at ten, I promise you, you <laughs> will not be asking for an after, after party, party yeah. bro. <laughs> like, we're coming <laughs> for four whole hours, bro. <laughs> niggas want to come in. Like, I just, you like me, and my niggas. You say all the time, like we'd be at infinity, right? And then like the the big surge doesn't happen until like. 12, 12, 30, 12 30, bro. Then yeah, that's bro. when everyone comes in, and you know you see all these spaces. Like, oh, like where is everyone? And it says reserve, reserve. People are like, oh, like they got duped. Mm. Like, no, those those spaces are actually reserved. Niggas are just not coming till one thirty. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I'm just mm-hmm. like, what's the point of coming at one thirty? You spent the money to come inside. Then you're coming, you're buying bottles at one forty five, and then you're complaining that the club is done at two. That doesn't make bro, sense. Before the liquor kicks in two thirty, bro. Like, okay, yeah. what? <laughs> what now? Exactly. Like, bro. I never understood that shit. Bro. I really never did. This. 
Yeah, man. man. I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to cook something up for Winnipeg that I'm going to just make it like a limited thing. You know, once I hit like a, obviously a small number, but I'm going to give them a very good time. Mm. Like I'll just say exclusive party, 100 people give you a very good time. If you're not once it's 100, I close the door, yeah. bro. You know, but that's the thing. If you close the door, niggas are actually rather wait in line than go to another club that's down the street. Cause I see sometimes like Asmar is popping. Oh God. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes Asmar is popping and like Resi is also happening that's down the street. 79 is happening down the street. But people would rather like Asmar is full capacity. They can't let you in. Mm, they're still but they would outside. rather be outside. Yeah. Like why is that? I need someone to walk me through the mentality. Cause I swear, if it was me, I can't full capacity. Okay, cool. I'm going to the next club. See, we've, we've, <laughs> oh, talk, see we've, we've talked about this before. You didn't talk to me, bro. So, there's, there's something, oh, this is where arrogant comes out. Ah. Anyways, there's something about um, humans <laughs> in general. About right? what? Humans in okay. general. We like, we like to feel love. We like attention. Rah. Right? This is, this is just the root of like it. Attention, right? man. Then you look at, um, I can only say Nigerians because I'm Nigerian. You look at Nigerians and you look at our culture. Our culture is very flamboyant. Our culture is very big boy. If you're not a big boy, you're not seen no, as anything. Yeah, now, and then you go to the elements of, let's say, like a, a party where the big boy is who gets the most attention. Most of the time, the whole point of having one spotlight is that everyone's there to watch the spotlight come in right because mm. that person that comes in and walks through the crowd in a certain look in a certain style and certain demeanor gets everyone's attention right that is one element of how parties like the interactions in parties used to be now what has happened is that you're now also in a, in a small city the problem with being in a small city is that it's easy to get it's easy to get a spotlight but you forget there's also hard work to get that spotlight right but a lot of people like to manufacture that spotlight so in their minds it's a thing of if i come at one o'clock people are there to watch me walk in right but the thing is now because let's say five people are thinking that and there's been something that's been reoccurring other people are now like oh cool. you know what I also feel like I want that attention. I need that spotlight too. I'm going to come late too. I'm going to come at one o'clock when everyone's there. I'll <coughs> walk in. I'll do my slow walk. Yeah, I'll walk around. People yeah. see me. Yeah. Eyes are on me. I go and sit down in my booth and remain secluded. Every, I've been seen. But what now happens if everyone thinks that way? Nobody comes on time. So that's, that's, that's so what's not happening. Because there the are spotlight. people... That's what I'm saying. <laughs> there, there, are people, there are people that are getting... This, there are people that are wanting that spotlight. And then there are people that are like... I want to have a good time. And I know that people... Now, because it's happened so much, people are now not going to turn up on time. So I'm going to wait till when people are going to be there so I can have a good time. What does that end up happening is that the spotlight people come at 1 and then the people that want a good time come up one thirty. I have a question to that, bro. What do you guys really consider as a good time? Is it with the people that you're around or the good music when you generally come out to the club? Like, what is it that kind of... Because to me, it's the music. 100%. Like, I can be in a club, nobody's there. Mm. So far, the music is right. Like, I would have a good time. I actually like that because of my social was like, but yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's the vibes, man. Like, it's the vibes. Like, it's the music, the the ambiance. Ambiance. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, like I like Infinity because I like... I, one, one, I like the space. I, mean, mm. I can explain why I like the I like the space. I love the music. Yeah, it's not ratchetly done. You know what I mean? And I loved, like, I love the space I was in, like, how I felt when I was there. Mm. So, it's for me, it's a combination of things. In terms of what Doxa said, I just, for me, because, like, it's weird with those guys, right? Like, I've been with guys where we come early, and they're like, oh, like, this is exactly why we come late. Like, because we're there, and no one's there yet. Uh. You know what I mean? And we're, we pull up at 10, 10, 30, like, oh, like, no, nah, let's go somewhere else. But you like, know what I mean? But like, what is the <clears throat> purpose of the of coming to the club? That's why. What's I the asked, purpose like, of opening at night? The music, or are you coming there 
just, just for to people. be around other people. Yeah, bro. Because yeah. if you come to Infinity and obviously nobody's there, but do you still have the ambiance? Mm. You still have the, the good music, music playing? Yeah. yeah. Like, what's now making you stopping now? Stopping you from not having go. fun. Exactly. Yeah. What's stopping you from not having fun? Yeah. So the attention, bro. Yeah, 100%. Just the intention. No, but attention. People crave yeah. attention. But people are still going to see you. No, but I want but all, I like, want all but, the attention. But like, who's literally... Okay, let's just visualize ourselves or anything. You're walking down into the basement. Let's just imagine, okay, everybody's out, you know, partying. You're walking down, security hose you, you're doing your thing, <laughs> you call. Like, what is... At what point do you usually... Do you get that spotlight? Like The spotlight starts from... Because remember, again, also some people... Because if, if it's a white event or if it's a, an event where there's, like like officials to it so if you're going to bell mts for a show you're not going to turn up late so if it's like if it's an event where it's it's very home crowd i know people the spotlight comes from the moment you're okay for example let me give you an example when ob when you brought ob right Uh the spotlight was naturally meant to be on him Uh so what did you do you turned up in a nice car Uh the essence was that he walks out and people are looking that's where the spotlight starts but that's that's a spotlight that's intended. When you're trying to manufacture your spotlight, you're turning up late with your music blasting out loud. Then you're walking around, yeah. walking around, examining the line, and what you're doing, going straight to the front. Because what the first thing you get is everyone in line is looking at you first. Oh. Then in your mind, you're thinking, oh, I can just bust through security and not have to pay, mm-hmm. or I try and work my way out not to have to pay the cover. Uh-huh. That's another spotlight because people are watching. Oh, who's that? Like, why yeah, didn't they have why, to pay? Yeah, why do you skip? That's the another line? spotlight. Yeah. Once you get through that, now you are walking through a crowd of people. Mm-hmm. That's more spotlight well, yeah. until you now reach your spot. Yep. By that time, you've gained enough attention to feel I'm fine. Yeah. But as a guy, you need to pop bottles to gain spotlights of the babes. Yep. But like, how long does that spotlight last, bro? Like the attention right. you want to see, you know, how like like I'm just trying to visual my, visualize myself as like, yeah. people in line. Oh shit! There's this guy that walks past, goes straight to the front. I promise you, by the time I get to the front of the line, I've forgotten who. So like, what is the real yeah. essence of life? That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's that moment. That's what right. I'm talking it's, it's about. It's it's just that think about it. it's, okay, let's say, let's, say, let's say you went to Toronto. You were waiting in line, and Drake came past the line. You would notice, right? Yeah. That's what people think is happening. Do you get what I'm saying? Like you're you're a sane person, so you like it's something hard to fathom. But for me, this is something that I observe, I watch, I ask questions, and not just questions like, oh, do you like the attention? I ask questions that help me understand why you do certain things. And it ends up being attention. When yeah. someone says things like, um, for example, people aren't here yet. You you want people to be here mm. to do what to see, to see yeah. Uh-huh. That equals attention. Yeah. Simple maths. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So all these things, it's just, it's just how it is. Like <laughs> I swear, um, I feel like I'm gonna take it upon myself to break that whole like stigma of black people pulling up late, man. Should try. Like why not? I would just start small. You know? I just, like, for me, bro, it's just it's just as simple as look. They open up the doors at ten. <laughs> they close at two. I'm not pulling up at one. Cause that first of all, I'm spending money to get inside. It 100. just doesn't make sense. Bro, it doesn't make bro. I'm I tell my niggas, I'm like, bro, like niggas like, oh, like like some of my niggas like, oh, we're pushing, I'm pushing it at twelve. I'm not coming before twelve. I'm like, why would you not come before twelve? Then you're gonna come, you're gonna come at twelve thirty, there's gonna be a line. Then you're gonna get complaining. Oh, um, why are we in line? By the time you get inside it's one. Uh-huh. Before you get you before you, twenty. Before you mingle, before you spend money on bottles, before you, like you said, the alcohol hits you, nigga, the club is <laughs> done, And then you're complaining again. It's so done, I'm like, oh, bro. simple math, nigga, let's go again, a little bit earlier. After party, guess what? They'll get charged after party prices. You get what I'm saying? Let's go a little like, bit early. Let's let's go there right before the crowd comes. We know the crowd is coming. Let's go before the crowd comes. Nobody <laughs> Nobody has an attention span. <laughs> The attention span is so short for everyone, bro. If there's no stimulation in front of them, <laughs> niggas want to... Bro, it's true, though. No, facts, if bro, nothing bro. is happening in front of you like this, bro, because of these damn phones, nigga, bro. Oh, yeah, there's no one here. Niggas can't even wait 10 minutes for people to come. No, let's cut. Let's cut. Let's go. Crazy. So it's, that's just what it is, bro. For, but for me, it just doesn't make sense. If I know I'm paying to get into somewhere, I'm not going to come when it's almost over. That doesn't make sense. Bro. It's what peaks. I don't understand is like, okay, now I get it. Obviously, the attention, but like people come early. If you guys actually come to my events, like I beg you, just come by like 
10 o'clock. There's like maybe like 50 people that'll come at 10, just get a wristband and leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? So they can come back when um, there's people guess and what? get their Pass attention. the line. Brother. Simple mask, Ray. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Simple mask, Ray. Nah, it's calm still, though. It's calm. <laughs> right. it's, it's I'm going to break that stigma. Way, I swear, I'm going to break it. You bro. should, man. Honestly. Because that's it's nonsense. Man, man. <laughs> it's nonsense. Black people are supposed but to be this, this is something that... Crazy. Crazy that shit. You should study in general. Like, like human psychology, yeah. party psychology. It's something yeah, you should study. I study, but I just can't fancy what's going on. I get... <laughs> I get what you mean. I just um, can't fancy. Also... I have a obviously a random question, but what is your take on like kids ha having kids before marriage? What is my t in terms of what? Like, would you kind of would I be okay having kids before marriage, or would you want to rather right wait till you're married? Um. <clears throat> well, the simple answer is I would want to wait. I mean, if you, if you want me to elaborate, I can elaborate. You wouldn't want to wait? I would want to wait. Okay. And naturally, I feel like, you know, under the um, under the guise of marriage, um, there's structure, there's a foundation. And when it comes to having children, you want them to be in a space where um, they can grow up well, mm -hmm. right? So um, I feel like if I were to have a child now, there's a lot of instability. I'm probably not with this woman. I don't know if we're going to last. Like, there's a lot of gray area when, when, when it comes to raising a child that can mess them up as well, right? So, I mean, you could also mess up a child. Oh, 100%, right? Married oh, 100%. Days. But, like, I'm, like I'm just kind of giving you... you know theoretically. Yeah, uh -huh. theoretically, I'm giving you that. And like I said, in my case, obviously, absolutely, you know, you're only, you, can, you only parent once. You don't really get a second chance at parenting. You only parent one time. <clears throat> and... You go off of what you know, but like I said, under, like you said, theoretically, under what it's supposed to be, a two-parent household, um, you know, a family, the whole idea of a family, a foundation, um, obviously, I'd want to wait till I'm also, you know, ready for that. So, there's this level of structure there, not just for me and my wife, but for my child as well, for my children. You know what I'm saying? So, I would definitely want to wait um, to have kids, for sure, for sure. Dr. Woody? Yes, <laughs> big set it all, man. Set family, it all. family, man. Hundred percent. Like again, it's it's one work divided by two compared to one work divided by one. The only thing that makes different situations and different outcomes is the different. people themselves. Mm. I mean, it will still be divided by two, whether you're married or not. You How think? you could be, you can have with your girl, like. She's still the parent of your child as well. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Well, okay. I'll give you background to where I'm coming from. My idea of marriage is that you sign a, a, con a covenant that is forever. Mm. If you both sign that covenant with consciousness that this is forever, you're signing up for forever. So you both know this is for forever. This has to work. If you're both in unison in that mindset, it is better theoretically to have two people working under that mindset than one, right? Yeah. For you, you know your child is forever. Your child is forever your child. Whether you die, whether the child dies, it's still your child uh -huh. because of bloodline. <clears throat> Spiritually, a marriage is a covenant between two people to become one forever, uh -huh. right? The only thing that spoils that forever is our human nature. So where I'm coming from, that's where my background comes from mm -hmm. in terms of like, if you're asking me under, would I rather be married and have a child than not be married and have a child? I'd rather be married to someone that also understands this is forever rather than be with someone that it could be temporary and you can find any reason to leave. Because under my eyes, marriage gives a safer container mm -hmm. to have anything to do with someone else than being <clears throat> single and dealing with someone else. Because at the end of the day, I do not control that person. In mm. marriage, marriage controls the both of us. If we don't understand that marriage controls the both of us, that's where we have problems. Mm -hmm. Once you start thinking individualistic in a marriage, that's where we have problems. Mm -hmm. You're not independent. You're dependent on the marriage. Mm -hmm. 
we are both signed to this mission. Once you start to think of yourself, you're now no longer focused on the marriage. And now you're going to be deviating. Why me, I'm staying here. Now you're, you're tearing us apart because we're going like this, right? So that that's how I that's that's my background to why I said yeah. what I said. I mean, obviously, there's a bunch of scenarios. You get, I, I hope you understand. I, what I get what he's yeah. coming, but obviously, my mindset is like fucked up, though. I don't believe in marriage. You don't? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was so, wondering. I knew. I knew. I had a feeling you were going to go you know, somewhere. Like I don't. That, I don't really believe in marriage, and it's just unfortunate. Like the thing about me is, I don't see marriage the way people kind of see marriage. You know, um, or maybe I see what people say, but I don't want that. Mm. I want marriage where it's kind of like you're constantly both really in love with each other, not as like, oh, we're responsible for each other. Like how you say, oh, the marriage controls us. Da da da. da. Like, it, does that make sense? No, it makes sense. But you know? what you're missing out is that what you're saying is the same thing I'm saying, just worded differently. Because if you're both in love with each other, are you not doing something? For her benefit Fact. and is she not doing something for your benefit you're both submitting to a bigger goal which is the love mm-hmm. but at some point you know that love actually dies just based off um just the human nature and it kind of turns into the responsibility part human nature yeah but why do you put why do you depend on that what is something so uncertain which is like bro we don't know the human nature bro like we don't know tomorrow i can wake up and like i can fall out of love for like my partner yeah you know and vice versa like why would you kind of like and with this whole modern you know oh shit they can leave anytime they just file a divorce and obviously they walk away with half depending on whatever agreement you guys mm-hmm. signed prior but like why do that do you believe in god do I believe in God. I'm asking. Hundred yeah. percent. Do you believe God changes? No. So, do you believe He created marriage? Do I believe He created marriage? Yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. Yes or no? Yeah. Like, I think. It's, I think it's it's it's, it's down to you how you see it. Because for me, I believe God is marriage. <clears throat> if I believe in mm. God and I believe God doesn't change, I believe marriage shouldn't change. The only thing that changes is, is what human nature. For me, if I am submitted to God, I'm on a mission not to be, not to succumb to my human, nature. human nature. Hence why I stay away from temptation. Mm-hmm. I do what I can to be the best I can because I know I have grace yep. and I'm trying to be better. When you're trying to be better, you're avoiding mistakes. You can have mistakes but you get back on the horse and you keep riding the road, right? If I have someone else that's doing the same thing, I believe in a bigger mission then. We can we can accomplish this mission because we're both we're both on this horse together and we're trying to get there. You can fall as long as you want to get back on this horse, we can keep going. But how many times would the person fall for you to realize that okay, maybe this is not my person? You know, did, no, I'm talking about my person. I'm not gonna this is my like, point. When I believe God is gonna give me my wife, he's not gonna give me someone that's not my person. Mm. So I'm only speaking from a perspective of mm. this is my person. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm speaking from. I'm not speaking on marriage as we see it now because marriage as we see it now brother i am with you bro. these women are treacherous <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation bro, am, see ray i'm with you bro these bro, women are treacherous. Like, bro, that's why women, i say like, all i have is myself, all in god's hands I even, like trust myself bro do you trust god 100 percent. then rely on that trust yep. forget yourself like but like it's it's like hot, I I, it's, hot, it's not easy bro the road the, the righteous road is narrow it's not meant to be easy like I know where I know where I know where you are. I'm telling you, like I understand. It's not it's not easy in any way. The fight to be righteous is not easy in any way because we're not in a, we're not in the container to be righteous. Everything around us is unrighteous. Yeah, it's not an easy road. That's why the reward is so high. Yeah, Do you get what I'm saying? Hundred. So like I I get exactly what you mean, bro. Like there are times where I sit down, I'm like Jesus Christ. Am I actually going to be married in this day and age? <laughs> I, I, I'm actually <laughs> right. one with it, bro. Like, but yet again, just to 
as much as I don't believe in it, like mm. I'm kind of also open to it. Like mm. again, I do trust God, and yeah. just if, the God, question. if God actually like provides for somebody yeah. that can take me off this mindset of like, and this mindset was generated off observation, of, yeah, 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 the yeah. whole day and age. But yeah. like, if someone comes in, like, by all means, like, cool. But as of right now, I'm okay. I even have my life structured <laughs> to like, I'm just gonna get a surrogate, get that, because I want my kids, man. Kids. I, bro, but that you know I feel so like. So is it is it is just the, the con- is, it, is it just the contractual shit that bothers you? Is it like the whole like divorce and then like, or is it like, are you, is it that what bothers you about quote unquote marriage? The fact that she can fall out of love and leave. take your Hundred percent, bro. That is so scary, bro. But, but she can uh, leave regardless. See, right, it's scary. Bro. What do you mean she can leave regardless? Like whether you, so are you? Because essentially, what you are you saying that? Because even if you're not married, she can still leave. So Brother, what's your point? Did you just happen? hear me? I said surrogate. No, he's, he's, no, he's going based off your question. He's yeah. going based off your question. Like if she's not married, because you asked, is, is it better to have a child in marriage? Oh, sorry, would you prefer to have a child in marriage or a child without? Yeah, that's what that's, that's what, what you, you asked. He's going based off your question. Bro, the thing is, I'm obviously talking personally. Like, I, like I said, my life structured. Like, I'm okay with being by myself. I want my kids because I feel like that is the most genuine type of love, parent mm. to offspring type mm. of shit. Mm. You know. Um, now, if I'm in a situation with a girl and um, she decides to leave, like, bros, cool. You get me? Like, so far you don't take me away from my kids. You know what I mean? But that would not be what I would want. Mm. I just want to, for them not to have control of my kids, which is the surrogate form. Raise my kids, be a full-time dad. I want yourself. Retire, I want to retire 40 on me. I'm retiring on 40. Mark my words. You have Amen. this? Amen. I am retiring at 40. I'm going to be a full-time dad probably get my kids by like 37 mm. you know god willing my parents are still alive by then they'll take care of the kids that speak kid can speak english <laughs> <laughs> and then i take full control bro like you know um and raise a family bro you know so you don't think there's space for a, a woman or a mother he said she's she open to us, us, bro. Like, but if she doesn't then if she doesn't i'm okay still mm. you get me like i know what i just want kids mm. You know, I mean, then that, that's that's true faith. Then, right. what what you're saying is true faith. This is what a lot of people can't admit. This is what <clears> a lot of people find so hard to admit is that I'm fine with leaving the worries of finding a good woman in God's hands. Mm. That's essentially what you've done. Yeah. Uh-huh. A lot of people take it as fuck these bitches. Uh-huh. A lot of people take it as I'm never getting married. A lot of people take it as the divorce rate so high, <laughs> but you're you're here. Like a lot of people don't admit to themselves that sometimes it's just you're trying to you're trying to be in control of who you marry. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's not that, bro. Yeah. Just let the woman come. If she yeah. doesn't come, you know that's not your calling. Yeah, and that, that's what you're that's what you're showing us. And it's it's good to know that there's still hope for manhood, bro. <laughs> yeah. nah, I hear that, bro. I hear that. Yeah. Bro. She comes, she comes, man. All right, it's time for Sheree ass. <laughs> so, part of the show, <laughs> no, no, no. so, what's one thing in dealing with a woman that um, would, if you were dealing with her, whether to take her seriously or you were to be in a relationship with that, um, turns you off? This one thing. I can start to like kind of help you guys. Out. Yeah. Do you or do you want to explain the question then start? Yeah. Do just, that again. Yeah. Just like what. Like, what's essentially, if you were to take a woman seriously, mm-hmm. or you were to be seeing her seriously, and you were t- to take that next step with her, what is something that would turn you off from that? So, for example, let me give you an example. Um, a turn off for me, for a woman that um, I would be taking seriously, is a woman that does not know how to control um, male attention. So, what that means uh. is someone, especially, like, if you're really pretty, right, and actually, the woman I'm going to be with is going to be with. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 So it's like, I love pretty women. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, exactly. Oh, yeah. So it's like, if, if you... Some guys do it. What I'm saying is, if you... just you, can't have the pretty woman. Yeah, right. that, oh, yeah, that is part of it, for sure. But if you're conventionally attractive and you know it, but you don't know how to handle male attention, it is a huge turnoff. Because it's like, how I see it is, if I have access to you, 
there's a reason that I have that access to you. Hundred. But if you're giving this, if anybody can have that access to you, yeah, nah, 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 I'm nah. sorry. Mm. I hear that. You need to be. You need, especially for me. But it's like a pride thing too. Like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like what for, nobody but, can but, access my woman. Just but me. it doesn't make me. sense for me. It's funny because when you like, I've seen like I've seen really really pretty women give their attention to like any nigga that wants the information any nigga that wants there's bro there's no barrier and i'm just like my nigga like (laughs) you not understand like how pretty you are like you should not just be giving any nigga your attention Mm. that's how i see if anything if you're pretty you should understand that you were born you know what i'm saying like but you're just any nigga that wants to snatch any nigga that wants your number any nigga that wants to talk bro you just like nah bro that shit because it's like why am i here then yeah, I'm man. here just like every other nigga. What's nah, the bro. point yeah, of being bro. exclusive? Exactly, yeah, bro. Because I hold my host, I hold myself to a very high standard. Come if on. I'm to now take a woman seriously, and you're acting like this, nah, bro. Come you on. gotta go. Mm. Yeah, man. <laughs> Race like preach. You know what I'm saying, though? Yeah, yeah nah, bro. I feel it, yeah, bro. bro. It's crazy out here. It's 100%. crazy out here, dog. So you're right. You shorties, Dre. It's treacherous, bro. I mean, it's always so good, bro. See, I've been too far away from, like, the dating scene that I, like, answering this question is, like, I don't even know. But anyways, if I was to obviously say my That's turn enough. off, yeah. at the beginning stages, obviously, I kind of look at how she communicates with people. Hmm. You know, like, even if, okay, we're out on a date, how you talk to the servers, you know, like, if you're being rude, if you're f- feeling entitled, mm. those type of things kind of turn me off. Your relationship with your parents, like, bro, if you're a clean person, mm. bro, because I'm a fucking clean man. Everybody can testify to that. <laughs> like, you come to my house, it's always spotless, you know? Mm. Um, always, bro. Best bachelor. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, honestly, it's just boredom. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm, I'm always on the phone like that's why you see my airpods always in my ear i'm always on the phone and while i'm like in meetings i'm just like cleaning everything yeah. it takes a little bit of stress away still you know but as to like going the further step from like dating to actually like being in a relationship what would turn me off is if she doesn't provide me peace yeah man you know what i'm saying huge like, yeah, if she's not if I can't see her as like my piece, raw. <laughs> <laughs> really you causing me problems? Why other people are causing me problems out there, man? My niggas are pissing off on the phone already. Bro, so, bro, like, you gotta go. <laughs> but nah, man. Don't worry. Maybe when I get back in the dating game, I'll give you guys a proper answer. That, yeah, that was good, good enough. It's a fabulous answer, yeah, actually. Oh, God, listen, enough, still, bro. Doc said I'm interested. Because I don't know if this nigga dates, man. If I <laughs> date? What do you mean? Bro, it's breach, man. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, are your turn offs, man? Interesting uh, guy. Shit communication, bro. Communication, be it like. I hear that. Like too. material communication, as in like returning calls or calling or texting or turning text to. Telling me what's wrong. Something, something as small as that it's okay. can piss me I'm, off. I'm fine. <laughs> but it, it can uh, it can piss me off a lot. Like I don't I don't like I don't like feeling angry. I hate that feeling. Mm. If you get me there, mm. who actually? I just I release. Huh? Who likes being angry? Now, yeah. Some people do. Except your sadist is it? Some some, some people remain in that like like re- reserve state and just that kind of like hard state just because it's protection. Mm. I don't like being there because I'm soft, bro. Like mm. if if I start to get angry, Jeez. it just destroys everything around me. It destroys my relationships with people. Like I know that when I get angry, I get snappy. I yeah. don't talk. Yeah, and you that can piss people off. Huh? When you're angry, why don't you talk? Because you also because don't communicate. No, when, I, when I'm angry, the reason I don't talk is because you clearly don't... Re- like, the reason you've got me there is because you clearly don't respect my... Like, you don't respect what I have to say, so I don't want to say anything. Yeah. If you're not going to listen, I don't want to say anything. Yeah. So, for example, if you're not going to talk to me or you're not going to reply to me, you don't want to talk, so I'm not going to so talk. So, you see, reaches out to you, you then keep quiet. Is that what you say? It depends how. <clears throat> I'll give you an example, actually, and she knows this, because I addressed she? it to oh. her. Yeah. So... Yes. Is that what they call you? Oh, no, no, not no, sure right no. now. Relax. Well, I was talking knows to the camera. It. Oh, <laughs> bro. <laughs> there was a girl I was talking to, and then um, she was doing this whole, 
You know how girls like to just do this whole bravado of like, oh, I like to be private. If you're private, you wouldn't have to tell me you're private kind of thing. Mm. But I like to be private. I mm. don't say anything. Mm. I said, fine. I'm, I know I'm private. I don't need to explain it to you. Mm. But cool. Then something happened. In hindsight, she told me, she gave me the reasons why. So essentially, the person that she was seeing saw that she was talking to me. And then he was telling her a bunch of lies that, oh, he sleeps everywhere and blah, blah, blah. And then she now thought that I had told someone that told him. She didn't realize that he was checking her phone. Right. Anyways, so that's just the background to why she started to act off. So now we're talking. She does the whole private thing, blah, blah, blah. One day she hits me up saying, um, so, so who did you tell? Firstly... Hello. Secondly, <laughs> what do you mean, who did I tell? Yeah. And then she didn't reply to that. She was trying to do the whole, like, above me. She'll reply when she can. When she replied, I oh. did not reply. Okay, that's understandable. I left it. But then... I no, no, but no, 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 no. I did, I did. I, I blocked her and left uh-huh. it. Then, along the lines, I now realized, again, that's my anger. I don't like being angry. Because the thing is... She shows up on my explore feed. She's got a big page. So she shows up on my explore a lot of times. So I'm like, I don't like seeing this part and just incites. Yeah. I don't like my, my heart just being, <coughs> I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I was not like, okay, cool, I apologize. I you know, before that, before I blocked her, it was, remember that trip to Toronto where I was tech, I was ranting to you. Yeah. So essentially what happened was after she did this whole accusation rubbish, who we who he told, I, I ignored it. I left it because I, I don't know what you want me to say. Uh-huh. So I clearly haven't told anyone. Um, the only other person in this relationship is you, so uh-huh. you got what I'm saying? Further on the line, she didn't apologize, no nothing. One day I just got her, I was I was out, I came back, and then I saw a text. Like, you know the, the hey, yeah. the, the vex, three, three, bro. Three, what I see? Yes, <laughs> the vex. She's like, hey, papi, I, ve- I was, I was, I I was typing, I was, I was ready to go like the insults that were about to be rained down but then something was fridge said just don't send it so i i closed off but i still need to vent so i i, I don't know if i called you, you. called me yeah, yeah i, I was angry <laughs> i was vexed but that's i don't like being in that state I, I don't like being in that state so like after a while i apologized and i and then she now explained that she found out it was her boyfriend but the reason why again when she messaged me i didn't reply the reason I didn't reply was because you have the audacity to accuse me of something mm-hmm. and then come back as if nothing happened. Yeah. So then later on, when I apologized, she then explained that it was because that happened and then she now realized that that was the case. And so that's why she came on this, hey, as yeah, if. Like, I, like, you know, that's yeah, crazy. Like, but I again, that's why I said <laughs> communication. That's, that's the situation where I wouldn't reply but Loki you know when she kind of mentioned hey and you were like obviously hated and trying to like go ham mm. I'm sure if you had obviously like mentioned that when she said who did you tell blah blah blah, blah and like a couple of days later just like renting out getting out like it would have saved you like holding in that whole like you know how you bottled a whole lot of things that were about to explode when she messaged you, hey? No, it yeah. was... So what had happened was when she said, the, who, did you, who did you tell? I said, no one, who you? She then didn't reply. Mm. Right? So that vexed me. Again, like, remember what I said. When something vexed me, I throw it away. I don't want to address uh. it. So I, I stopped talking to her. Okay. Then it was later on where she then did the hey that... It now threw back that anger mm. and everything was now building. Mm. In that moment, I was I was going to burst. It wasn't like something I was building slowly. It was something mm. that erupted okay. in that mm. moment. Okay. Like, I hate, I hate disrespect. Mm. <laughs> oh my God. I hate it with a passion. I hate it. But... Oh, interesting. Um, good question. I think I want to ask you guys, as other males, um, I think this is something that's very, very big, um, especially as guys that, you know, we're not really kind of taught or trained to have to control our emotions. I want to ask you guys as other males, as, a, as excuse me, as other grown men, how do you deal with your anger? So he kind of just explained a little bit. I want to hear from you. Like, how do you deal with anger? Like, when you're upset or somebody pisses you off or you literally... Because I've been there so many times where, like... And Doc's talking about it, too. It's like, when you're angry, you 
you, you're so radioactive, you're not thinking clearly, and you just you explode sometimes. Like you just say things you don't mean, you do things you you do things you don't actually mean, but in that moment, that's how you feel. So I just want to ask you guys, um, as other males, as other men, how do you deal with your anger? Um, <clears throat> how do I deal with my anger, mm. man? Like overall, I think. I pour it down on other people. You vent? Yeah, but not to the person I'm angry at. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously. Um, okay, let me rephrase this. Actually, first that I actually give myself time mm-hmm. to actually recollect. Mm-hmm. Like, because I think I, if my previous relationship back back then, um, she was white. And um, obviously she, the whole relationship taught me a lot as to like, okay, words get to people. Mm-hmm. That was something that growing up, obviously, it doesn't like your words don't get. Oh shit! Is it done? No, no. Keep going. Keep okay. Going. Yeah. Words don't really get to you. Know how your parents being salty, but you know, oh, they love you. Blah blah blah. blah. So like, obviously, from that relationship, I see how my words affected her, and I subconsciously kind of started making myself like, okay, every time I'm mad at this girl, I don't just speak right away mm. on my emotions. Mm. I actually take my time. I go out for a smoke. Mm. I recollect or like yeah. you know yeah. word my articulate my words process properly before you speak ex- before i speak yeah. and by that time i'm done doing that the emotion is done yeah you know like and um yeah man but like i think i've always been doing that but obviously sometimes i have close boys of mine shout out came or shout out prince you know i go and i you rent just talk to them, to them yeah you know, yeah. get other people's perspective on yeah. whether I'm tripping or I'm not tripping. Yeah. But yeah, man, I don't really want, I'm not really an angry person, mm-hmm. to be fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do I come off as an angry nah. person? No. Yeah, no. Never. I think I've seen you mad like once. <laughs> it's that's because niggas, are, niggas are pissing you off at your event. Right. Niggas were blowing. Niggas were fucking shit up for you. Like, bro, what's wrong these days? Right. Even but that, you though. Even that. Bro. Like, the, I think the only moment you can actually know that Ray is mad is when you start seeing tears. Like, bro, that's something that I actually don't control. But that's when you know, bro, I'm actually just seeing red. Mm. There's no other color. <laughs> <laughs> when you start seeing tears coming down my eyes, man, like, yeah. I beg you just wrong. Mm. Yeah, you know, but I, I actually... I think I control my emotions pretty calmly. It's, man, ang- anger is such a strong emotion, too. It's like, for me, it's something... I'm asking you guys because this is something I deal with. Yeah. When I get angry, bro, I, I've literally... There's been so many times that I've done... I've either done things I regret or I've said things that... Because it's like... It's almost like... It's like this high, almost. Like, you're just, you're just... Bro, you just... Everything is just... Your brain literally just shuts off. Right. And you just go into this, like, autopilot mode. And you just start doing shit and saying shit... And oh my gosh, I so I've been there. So that's what I'm asking. This other nah, I see like, you've been there. Yeah. Nigga, so it's like, like <laughs> it's like a it's like a learning thing for me too. It's like I'm asking other guys like, how do you guys deal with that emotion specifically, um, so you don't end up doing you know doing saying something you regret, you know what I mean? So yeah, I think it's just taking time to just like process it, bro. Yeah. Remember you said it's a high. Mm. Yeah. Now you understand why people stay in it. Yeah. I hear that. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Being being angry, sometimes. You get angry and you see how it makes other people feel. You now like that whole fear factor. Uh, Some people like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's all depending on the person. mm -hmm. I don't. I just prefer to be loved and to show love. Mm -hmm. I I can't. It takes too much out of me. Too much out of me to be angry. Mm -hmm. Way too much. Yeah. That's why I had to cut that guy off my life, bro. That guy was pissing me off every day, bro. Yeah. <laughs> every day, bro. That's a conversation. <laughs> oh, I know we're getting to that, but hold on, hold on. Before you guys go, I actually want to kind of like use you guys as a test for, um, as Rayway mm-hmm. speaking. Um, what's you guys' take on high ticket fees? In terms of like, okay, you know with this whole Ruga thing. Do you think Ruga is worth $70? Not saying that he's not. But obviously, would you pay some? Like, there's this whole stigma with Winnipeg about ticket prices. Mm-hmm. But like, people in Toronto are paying like, okay, for this Rama thing, I just wanna, I'll bring it out. Um, Rama in Toronto is like they're charging one forty, and let's just say, okay, 
Rema is trying to come to Winnipeg. I'm not saying that, but if Rema was trying to come to Winnipeg, I, as a promoter, I'm afraid to put the ticket past 100 because of Winnipeg people. Mm. Like, why is that? There are two reasons. One, because you've never done it. And because of your career. <clears throat> and two, because here there's no star quality to why you'd be charging that. But quote, I'm seeing... Quote, I'm unquote, seeing quote, unquote, quote, unquote. But I'm seeing people react. Obviously, I'm not involved with Ruga, but mm. people actually come to me and be coming with all this, Ray, what, $80? What? Really? Really? Da, da, da. I'm like, yo, it's brother. familiarity, bro. It's, bro, I get it's, this complaint. It's, like, it's unfortunate. It because, because bear in mind, how many concerts have you planned? How many events have you done? I can't count, man. How many of them have you charged over 50? Probably two. So now you can understand why... Ah, oh, we used to paying twenty or oh, eighty. Yeah, familiarity for sure. Do you get what I'm saying? They're too familiar with the twenty. Mm. But why? Because also, okay. Like, let, me, this oh, sorry, let, let me go. Let me go to the before, Toronto part. The before, Toronto part. Oh yeah, carry on. This is seeing people that would still go and fly to another city, mm, mm. pay the flight to Toronto, maybe <clears> let's just say five hundred dollars mm. round trip, Airbnb. pay Air, Airbnb transportation, mm. then pay the Toronto price. Mm. So now in Toronto, you're more likely to meet and be in a in a space with bigger celebrity like or bi- like I'm gi- I'm giving you consumer mindset. Yeah, that's what this it is, is not business. this is not reality. Yeah. This is consumer consumers are stupid. <clears throat> the experience of Toronto is the stardom. Mm-hmm. The stardom is what creates that inflation in the price. Yeah. Here, I know everything. I why am I in my house and you're making me even pay for this concert? That's crazy. There's a lot. Of, <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, there's a lot of audacity crazy. people have when there's familiarity. Yep. Even with my concert, I remember when I was doing the, I was doing, I was planning the event. I was with the event planner and she asked me, oh, how much?" I said thirty. She was like, "Really? This is a white woman." That's crazy. I said, "That's like crazy. what?" She she was saying, "That's too low." Of course. And I was thinking to myself, shit, yes, it is fucking too. Yeah. Because again, it's it's you have to believe in what your what experience you're selling, and you have to sell that experience. What people are seeing are they're seeing you sell the ticket. That's what they've been seeing because they're so familiar with you. Oh, raise my guy, he's just selling me a ticket. I could even try and chat to him to get a few free tickets. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. This is this is the consumer mind, mm-hmm. right? So now, whereas if you're, you're giving them... With, with promoters in Toronto, they can get away with charging those prices because they don't have to do anything to sell that, ex- that experience. Uh-huh. Do you get what I'm saying? Whereas, like, here, I'm cool with Ray. I could, I could put, try and even chat my way to a free t- Like That's what you have to fight with. But then, again, this is where you have to... Cool you have to, you have to stand your ground and you have to find a way to produce and give them the value of the experience rather than thinking of it as like why they like trying to haggle the ticket price think about think about selling them the experience you're going to see Ruger you're going to see him you're going to see him you're going to have more chance of touching this guy than you would in Toronto that is what I'm selling you I'm not selling you $80 paper mm. or $80 mega data I'm selling you the experience that's that's really it but then it's something that it wouldn't happen now it will happen over like a, a period of you sticking to this is what my price is and once you stick to that for a prolonged amount of time people are going to be like okay you know what you guys he are, actually throws good parties it's going to be a tough ginger. period but he's right man you guys are ginger man next event bro it's it's not it's not daydreaming bro <laughs> bro like look look at the white events bro They've they've been they've been setting prices from time. Yeah. They were, people are used to it. Yeah, bro. With us again, we we like we like nice things. If you show me the nice things, I won't think. How many of these guys and girls are buying? How many girls are, are, that are texting you have Telfer bags? How many of them have Louis Vuitton? How many of these? This is someone's name, bro. So, see, forget this Gucci. This is a gift. I don't I don't buy. With my own money, I don't buy designer because I don't, I, I don't like the idea of me paying this much for someone else's name. I have my own name, my own unique name, and I'm not even trying to sell Sorry. my... What? Yeah. And I'm going to now give this guy because he said his name is worth four bags. I'll not give him four bags because that's what he said. Ah, uh-uh, come on now. I hear that, though. Do, do you get what I'm saying? So, bro, 
if they're able to how many guys out here are going to they'll be flying to toronto that's ticket price get a hotel that's hotel price i'll be wherever they're staying that's the price with that get uber around mm -hmm. and on top of that you're now going to live in toronto now buy 5k worth of stuff yeah and you're complaining about eighty dollars. Come on, bro. Think don't don't be too restricted by what you the resistance you're gonna get now. It's not about we're living in La La Land. It's about what you believe in yourself, yeah. bro. Believe believe that I'm giving you an experience. If you don't want, I, okay, cool. That's fine. At the end of the day, after two three years of you see me throwing sick events, you're gonna have to pay it anyways because everyone's there. Everyone, yep. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, bro. bro it just you just have to do it mm. for people to know this is happening yeah. if you keep on staying with your fears everyone's going to be happy you're going to stay with your fears mm -hmm. because they're going to now they're going to see the power they have over you mm. the fact that i have ray on snapchat to text him and he's going to reply that's power i have over him there's a small bit of power it goes back to the attention thing there's a small bit of power i have over ray i know he's not going to increase the price because if he does if he dare increases the price i'm going to message him mm. But you have to believe in what you're selling, bro. Mm -hmm. You read, bro. How many events have you have you have you had that I've I've haggled you for price? I I know what you're trying to do. I'm gonna pay if I can. Do you mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? I'm, like, it's it's not a, it's like you have to you have you have to remember you're the one that's in control of the, you're, you're the one that's controlling their their vibe. Okay. They're not the one that control of you. Obviously, you consider what will make this better for you tell me and i will do it uh -huh. at the end of the day i'm still the one that's creating it for you yeah uh -huh. you can give me suggestions and give me how to tailor it but at the end of the day i'm the one that has to go and get this done for you that's the power i have you're coming to me for this service the service of a party and a vibe you're coming to me this is what i charge if you don't want it you don't want it cool I will still find a way to get other people to pay. And by the time they stop, bro, it's going to get to a point where if, if you if you stick to your beliefs in what you're doing, it will get to a point where the people that were complaining about before, they'll get to a point where it's too expensive to complain now. Uh -huh. Bro, you can't complain to Gucci. You can't complain to, <laughs> bro, customer service. They're going to ignore you, bro. What? You walk into my store and you're complaining about my price. Yeah. Go elsewhere. How many other promoters are there? Are there okay, cool. Go. You just you just have to re you just have to deliver great experience mm. and great value. Yeah, that's all you have to worry about. Yeah, that's what I do, man. That's what I do. If you guys haven't been to any of my railway events, man, check out the website. All the dates are there. It'll Where, be in where's the description? It going? It'll be description? In the description? Yeah, yeah, yeah. should be. <laughs> 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 like somewhere on the screen, though. <laughs> You know, you know, we got Matthews coming out for this summer, bro. We're gonna be outside. What? You know, every day of the fucking week, bro. Amen. I'm promising you that. And it's gonna be crazy vibes though. It's not like mediocre. Lots of thoughts, lots of efforts has been put into it. Like I always do, man. All my events are very well thought out. Um and yeah, man. Obviously the whole goal is to kind of make Winnipeg one of the hottest cities, bro. And that's gonna be a reality. Amen, brother. Hundred percent, and it's, it's crazy TV. because, bro, I've actually been to other like cities. Okay, let's not talk about even Toronto, bro. But before we get to Toronto, you go to Vancouver, you go to, you know, all these other cities, bro. Like, bro, Winnipeg as it is right now, a hundred percent better than all those cities. Yeah, a hundred percent. This Except, is like, out. I swear, he's <laughs> oh, getting clipped out. The one I'm sending to bro. everyone, all the promoters, I'm sending that. Bro, hundred percent, bro. Winnipeg is better than all other cities, bro. Toronto, like, obviously, like, there's not much of a difference though, like, with what Winnipeg has. Like, I don't know. I really don't know. I can't fathom why people will actually fly to experience the kind of same thing that you're probably going to be experienced seeing in Winnipeg. You'll obviously, see different cheeks, bro. <laughs> that could possibly be a reason, but obviously... Like, Unless Winnipeg you're going to fly the buddies over bro. here. Bro, they will come. Yeah? Bro, it'll get to the point that people are going to be coming out of, like, Amen. Winnipeg to come Amen. party, Keep, bro. Say it and believe And it's man, actually bro. going to happen. Amen. And it's crazy, bro. You know, lots of love, like, has been shown to the Rayway brand. I remember even being in Toronto, bro. I'm outside smoking, and a guy comes up to me. He's like, "Are you Rayway?" 
Oh, yeah. Like, Raw. Global this brand. Crazy, <laughs> this is crazy. This is God's work, man. Brick by brick, man. Brick by you brick. You get me, bro. That's the motto. Brick by brick. <laughs> yo, changing the scene. Brick by brick, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, man. You guys pull out. Ruga is happening on the 8th. I said I won't promote that shit, but <laughs> we have to actually show Winnipeg out in numbers to the world, man. You know, that's the whole goal. It's to kind of expose Winnipeg to the world. You know, and with Ruga coming, man, let's just all come out and support, you know, because Ruga is going to post it and having all of us all come out, they'll be like, wow, this is Winnipeg. <laughs> bro, Black Bones, bro, like, bro, I was shocked. At, did you guys go? I didn't go, but I heard it was bro. crazy. Heard bro, was all the other cities, I can't talk for like Toronto, but like, I think Vancouver, even Calgary, bro, like, rah, Winnipeg pulled the fuck out, bro, like, <laughs> sorry for the story, but yeah, man. We're we're coming, we're coming, <laughs> we're coming, bro. We're coming, but yeah, man. I don't know if that's a wrap. Follow, follow Rayway. Rayway E N T X Black and the Berry. You know what I'm saying? You get me though. Yeah. Now this is subscribe, size, man. Subscribe yeah, man. Comment, Appreciate comment what you it. thought about this episode. Tell us what you thought about. Ray. And let me know who you guys are trying to see. We'll <laughs> make it happen, bro. Tell them Burner Boy. We want to see nah, Burner nah, Boy. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> Two hundred million. <laughs> Yeah, Remo. Yeah, I want Remo. I can't lie. Say nothing. I'm there with it. Would you, how much would you pay for Remo? Um, $500. $500. Nah, okay. <laughs> on God, 500 That's mental. I don't know how much the, what's it called? I mean, it depends on, if he was coming, I would pay to go. I would pay to go. I would pay to go see him. Like, 200 Would you? I would pay to go see Remo for $200. He's like that to you. I think he's a really good artist. Bro, he's, he's actually the top well. man right now, unfortunately. He's popping. He said, unfortunately? Unfortunately, man. I'm sorry to all the you don't like fans. Wait, unfortunately, I'm you don't sorry like to all the No, he's the top. Why are you saying unfortunately then? Like, because, like, like I'm me? sure David Doe fans, Whiskey fans are going to come out to me. I'm like, yo, listen, it's unfortunately. Yo, Remus, guy, Remus that guy right now. He, he's the team. hottest, man. He's popping, for sure, for sure. And, uh, you know, get this video to, like, 100k likes and we'll bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring it up. We'll bring it up. We'll bring it up. You guys do that and we got you. You know? So, yeah, Subscribe, man. like, comment, share. We just hit 600 subscribers so we That's appreciate crazy, all of our bro. Yes. followers. 1k on the way. We're going up. 1k on the way. Nah, it's mm -hmm. happening, man. It's happening.